727-873-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the June 28th, otherwise known as the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is tossing at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to us at just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During the next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6640. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always let your fingers do the walking. That means go ahead, send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. But inside that subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question, of course, in our Tigers, then will any. And every ping will do, but Stevie does prefer those private ones, just a little bit easier to keep track of your request. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we've got all the U.S. indices trading at the downside. Dow's off 277, 8 tenths. One and three tenths for the S and P, or 51 points. Nasdaq two and a quarter percent, 267 points. That's where the real problem is at. We'll take a look at that shortly. Russell's off 16. That's down about one percent. Semis nearly two percent, or 49 points. The trendy's off about three tenths, or three quarters of a percent. That's 101 points. Gold's off buck 70. Silver's down 31 cents. Lights we crude up 230. Natural gas up 13. The 30-year Treasury's down three ticks. 135.07 is the print. As far as what's leading to the upside today, it's Qualcomm up five and a Five and a half percent or seven bucks. Uh, Oasis Petroleum's up four bucks or three percent. Lockheed Martin, four bucks. One percent. Hess Corp, four bucks. And that's about four percent. Google's the leader downside from a dollar standpoint. That's off 71 bucks. Latest Technologies down 40 bucks or nearly about six percent. Uh, Booking Holdings off 31, one and six tenths. Tesla off 30 bucks, four percent. HubSpot down 21, that's six and a half percent. So certainly we've got some movers. And a bunch of shakers out there. But I did mention that the issue is with the NASDAQ 100. What I meant by that was this. Let's take a look at our TAS market breadth dials out here. And you're looking at the upper right. It's in the red zone on the 60 minute and the 240. The daily says, uh, be careful out there. Maybe this is just a head fake because the daily is still bullish. So let's go take a look at what this actually is telling us or communicating to us. Right now, on a daily basis, there are 34 instruments trading above the top of their daily profile, 31 trading below the bottom. So it still has this bullish crossover. When we take a look at the shorter term time frames, for example, if we look at the four hour time frame chart. Here we are. Now this four hour chart, this four hour chart, the, um, Four-hour time frame. Oh, I don't have it here. Uh, shoot. I believe that it's not till 4 o'clock when this bar closes. So right now at 1.09 in the afternoon, it's not really commu it's communicating the current status. But the question is, does it hold by the end of the day? So 10 are trading above. 63 are trading below the 240-minute profile. Now we're going to go take like, at where the support levels for those two specific time frames are. 60 and 240. And again, on the daily time frame, as we said, we still have that bullish crossover. Okay, so let's go take a look at the NQ. Let's do this here. Let's move this over. Let's move this over. Get that out of the way. Now let's actually go take a look at the NQ's charts. We're going to change screens. We're going to go take a look at the multi time frame chart. So in the upper left, you've got the daily time frame. Uh, price may be targeting, so one price target on a further move lower is going to be 11,560 or thereabouts. That's its red oscillator and change line. We have a nice TD9 count top on the five hour time frame, 300 minutes. Price right now is trading below. Now, this bar here is going to close at 2 p.m. If price closes below the bottom of its profile, which is at 11,800.20, we're trading below that now. If we close below that, odds, odds are 
the price would pull back. We'd see a further pullback, and 11,543 would be the number. 11,605 is another area to be watching. That's on the two-hour time frame chart. Price is below its first breakout level. Typically, when you close below one breakout level, you go to the next, and that's at 11,605. So our range of possibilities are endless. But right now, our range with regard to where support is at, assuming 11,800 fails at 2 p.m., don't know whether it will or won't, is between 11,543 and 11,605. But look at the 60-minute time frame chart. That was one of the time frames where we had that bearish crossover. Now here, let's open this up, see what we see. So there's an A to B equals CD to the downside. That's clear. I'll draw in the A to B line, and we'll just move that over to the C target. So A to B looks like this. And now all I've got to do is take that line from a price projection standpoint. So you can see we're well below the one-to-one -one level. And that says that if we see a bullish reversal candle on a 60-minute time frame, that's going to confirm a Gartley buy pattern. Short of that, and short of a TD9 count pattern forming, which we're well away from that taking place, then this says that price would want to target the 11,374 area. That's what's coming from the 60-minute time frame. Now, as we scan the other time frames out here, you've got a 15-minute TD9 count bottom, so that's a beautiful thing. That says on a 15-minute basis, if we see a close below 11,756.50, then those lower targets that you and I took a look at are more likely because you will have a bottoming pattern here that has failed. And that's really about it. We take a look at the NQ, um, at least at this stage of the game, for these time frame charts out here. One of our dinners, Dan in Boston, he likes to look at Nike. And uh, in looking at Nike, uh, I believe Dan, if I, maybe I am misstating this, but uses that as a guideline for the general markets. Well, if we take a look at Nike, it's getting the schnot kicked out of it today. Where's my three time frame chart out here? Here we go. And it's got big volume behind the move. Now we're going to take a look at what Nike is doing. Oops, I'm sorry. Let me change screens here. We're going to uh, move back and forth. Hopefully, I remember to move back and forth on the uh, screens. But we're going to the black background screens here right now. And then in a few moments, we'll go take a look at the white background charts, just trying to actually get this set up so I can get to the right spot out here. We're going to take a look at what Nike is and isn't doing. So if we use that as kind of a proxy for what the markets are doing, that may provide us with some uh, important information. Now, from a volume standpoint, you can see you've got big volume, already at 22 million shares. If I open up the daily time frame chart, last time we had volume like this was back in the trading session of on the September 24th. It's, uh, I couldn't actually read the volume there, but we can now. That volume at day's end was 27 million shares. We're already at 22 million shares. So it looks like we're going to have even more volume on that day. Now, here what price is doing, it's pushing into a swing point with volume. That's a swing point from May 25th. That only had volume of 7 million shares, but it hasn't been able to bust through that level. Mm, something to think about. Now, before I change charts, what I will share with you, this is the uh, daily time frame for Nike. That is that we have a TD9 count bottom that formed on this bar right here. That's a bar from June 22nd. I'm going to draw a line across the bottom of the screen out here so you'll have that price. This is the price to pay attention to, and especially today. As long as 104.61 holds, on a daily basis, there still is an effect, a TD9 count bottom. It closed below that, and that would then suggest that we're headed lower. We come back from this break, we'll finish taking a look at the Nike one, NKE, which on a weekly basis has a confirmed Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom. We'll be right back. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Good back, folks. So, the chart we actually have up on our screen right now is a correlation chart. And uh, this one at the top uh, shows the uh, chart here for Nike. Uh, what's not shown is what this is correlated against, which right now is the S&P 500. The bars on the bottom, when they are above zero, which most of these are above zero, and this is set for a three-day time period. That's the shortest correlation time period that I can use. So it's looking at the average from a three-day standpoint. And you can see when bars are above zero, it tells you you are directionally correlated. So to use Nike as an example, as a proxy for what's going on in the market, absolutely. Uh, we can do this here. You can take a look at Apple. Now, of course, I've got this going against the APL. I've got this going against the S&P 500. But uh, you'll see the same kind of uh, you know, setup here, three-day proxy, so the direction of the uh, markets. But we're taking a look at Nike because it's uh, trading at the lows with volume, but it hasn't been able to bust out that uh, swing point. Let's go change over now to our white background screen. Give me a moment here. And I mentioned as we were going into the break, on the weekly time frame, you've got a Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom pattern. That formed last week. That formed. Now, we get these patterns out here. Actually, it's formed a couple different times. So the, the first confirmation of the Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom actually took place on May the 27th. And then you got a second confirmation of Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom on June 24th, the week for June 24th. So what Nike needs to do in order to negate its bottoming signals, both for the daily and the weekly time frame, is close below 115.99. Hasn't done that. What it needs to do on a weekly basis is to tell you that it's going to get its mojo, and that mojo would really just take us back to 121.30 at a minimum. Its price has got to close on a weekly basis above its red oscillator and change line, currently printed at 112.17. So on the daily time frame, what price would need to do, I gave you a number which was the TD9 count, but the breakout level is really where price needs to close below, and that's at 103.46 has not done that. Now, price is below that red oscillator and change line. As long as that condition remains, odd would, odds favor at least a test of the 103.46 level. Perhaps price will actually go ahead and break through that area. 30-minute time frame chart. Nike's got a 30-minute TD9 count bottom. Oscillator and change line, which changed colors recently. Price should be able to make its move up to that line. 
That's currently printed about 10688 out there. So with regard to Nike, that's what we're taking a look at. In summary here, Nike's got a bottom for its weekly time frame that is still in place, for its daily time frame that is still in place out here to prove itself. What we really need to do is see price get back above its red oscillator and change line. That's 108.04 for the daily and 113.16 for the weekly time frame. Let's go to our first question. It's actually the only question that we've got in at this moment. This one coming from HD. HD says, uh, would you please take a look at Pfizer, PFE, and PG, Procter & Gamble. Own some of each and thinking about selling them. Well, let's go take a look and see what they're communicating to us. We'll start with just take a look at our three time frame charts out here, daily, weekly, and monthly for Pfizer. PFE, again, is the uh, ticker symbol there. We take a look at uh, Pfizer. Here's what we can see. First of all, Pfizer on a monthly basis is testing its green oscillator and change line. There's a TD9 count top. But as long as price holds that green oscillator and change line, that is currently printing at uh, HD. That level is uh, 5027. Conditions will be somewhat neutral. On a weekly basis, I drew it in on the daily time frame. What I really see is a good old-fashioned consolidation. So let's go take a look at that consolidation. Let's uh, open up the daily time frame chart. Now the daily time frame chart, let's pull this back just a tad. Here what we see, or at least what I see, is really just a sideways consolidation. That range is from about 46, 40 or so up to about the 55, 36 level. So good consolidation area. Uh, there was a new profile. It's still a new profile. Well, I can't say new. It's about a week, a week, uh, maybe a week, maybe two weeks old out here. But what it did form, HD, it formed above price, which is kind of a bullish or bearish message out here. We can see that yesterday price got up towards that level. That level, by the way, the bottom of that profile is 52.35. Yesterday's high was 52.23, and price is pulled back. But it's still above that red oscillator and change line, so it's unclear. Maybe what Pfizer's doing is pulling back to 50.01. You're really in the center of that consolidation, right? The center to the bottom or the center to the top out there. So you're kind of in no man's land or no woman's land out here. Um, so you're, you're considering jettisoning the position out here. Uh, certainly, you should have a stop in place. I can understand jettisoning the position if price closed below 50.01, because then that would really suggest to us that price should go down and hit the uh, bottom of the consolidation pattern. Uh, so the weekly, if the, and if the monthly were below its green oscillator and change line, you know, then I'd be on board with that too. But you're right in the middle of consolidation. Price may, in fact, be wanting to move down to the bottom. The confirmation of that, though, HD, would come from a close below $50.01 out there. Let's try uh, Procter & Gamble. PG is the ticker symbol. Now, uh, I've got a number of things that are running. This will take about 10 seconds to populate here. So... Uh, I suggest we get a swig of water. Only problem is I got an ice cube that uh, slid through that hole, which I don't mind chomping on. I may have to do that. It just might not sound good on the microphone. Oh, well, got to do it. Got to do it. No choice. So let's take a look at uh, PG on a monthly basis. TD9 count top. Price makes, a way, makes its way all the way back to its breakout level, 131.94. Now, it's not a bottoming pattern. But what there is, um, when you get back to the breaker level, that can be a bottom. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. When I say not a bottoming pattern, no A to B equals CD, no TD9 count, no roads to indicator signal, no wave number seven. But pulling back to a breakout level can be the bottom. So on a monthly basis right now, that's what we're going to say. On a weekly time frame out here, don't have any kind of bottom signal. But the oscillator and change line, oh, I take that. No, I don't take that back. No bottoming signal. Uh, but the asset and change line has changed colors, and that could become a target. Price on a weekly basis is trading. It's a bullish structured profile. So last week, you know, so last week closed above the center, signaling that price wanted to move up to 158.75. But of course, we knew the asset and change line could be an area of resistance HD. You need two closes above that center, and right now price is trading below. That's at 142.50 or 141.37. Again, we're kind of mid-stroke here. <laughs> well, and I'm looking at the daily time frame, and I do have a bottom signal there, and that is wave number seven. That is letter G. And uh, so at this time, price is above the top of its profile. So you've just got to pull back, so that, and there's no pattern. 
out here. There's no topping signal inside of Procter & Gamble on a daily time frame. Um, oh, interesting. Let me do this. We're going to switch panels out here, uh, HD. And the reason is because there's a new profile that my other system is picking up that is not being picked up by the white background chart. So let me hear this at least as information I can provide to you to assist you with your decision there. And you'll see that here in a moment. I'm going to just simply expand out the daily time frame screen. And that is the following. One, a brand new profile, bullish and structure has formed. The bottom is 140.85. The center is 142.31. The top is 145.24. If price were to close below, 140.85 odds favor HD that price will pull back further that further level is going to be 138 that is the oscillator and change line so those are your parameters that will help you I think to make your decision thanks so much for taking the time to write in folks I'd love to hear from you as well it's Steve at TFNN.com or give us a call at 877-927-6628 if you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go to our next question. It's the only question we've got in the queue, so I would love to hear from you as well out there, whoever you might be. This one is from Philip. Philip writes in, he says, uh, could you take a look at Rocket Lab? RKLB is a ticker symbol. They just launched a high-profile mission for NASA to the moon this morning, and I was expecting to bounce to the upside. And uh, basically, in this equity here, there's very few people that are in a winning position. This is trading at $4.04. You know, Philip, uh, these guys don't make any money. I think they need to charge NASA a bit more out there. 
Uh, and uh, I know a thing or two about NASA, and they're slow payers out there. So not good when you're a company that's not making money and you did a project. But uh, with regard to what is this stock doing, we've got the daily, weekly, and monthly uh, charts up on our black background screen. What you should notice here, first, there's not enough data on the monthly time frame to generate any kind of TAS market profiles. But there is on the weekly, and there is on the uh, daily time frame. And prices are below the bottom of both those profiles. Now, the daily might hold the support. Support, by the way, would be, oops, give me a second here. Lost that. Uh, support would be at $4.07. You're trading at $4.04. We'll change over to the, well, and there's an A to B equals C to the downside. I think this might take it to zero, though. So here on the weekly basis, it's pretty easy to draw this A to B equals CD pattern in here. The A point is going to be the high from back on uh, September of 2021. The B point, the low of January 20. This is just a weekly time frame. January 24th, 2022. The C point would be up on the week of February 7th. And that's going to give us a one-to-one -one of uh, minus $2.68. So we can't really use the A to B equals CD pattern out here. Let's go change over to our white background chart, see if there's any kind of signal information for you. And at this stage here, um, the weekly has a wave number seven. That is the letter G. That's a very small part of the Chapman wave. If you saw it close below that low, that low, by the way, is $3.93. Actually, if it ticks below that low, um, which it hasn't done yet, if it ticks below that low, it negates that signal as a potential bottom. You can see out here on a weekly basis, the level that price would need to close above it in order to suggest that there's some kind of movement to the upside is going to be that red oscillator and change line. Uh, Phil, that is currently printed. This will change, you know, changes each tick, so to speak. It's $4.61 out here. Now, the daily time frame, oddly enough, why would it be odd? No, not oddly enough. But what this did here was on the trading day of June 15th, this confirmed a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Now, in order to maintain that bottom, price must continue to close above $3.93. You're at four dollars and four cents right now. So it does have a bottom signal out here. What price has been unable to do is close above the top of its profile. The top of its profile, it's a new profile right now, is up at the four dollar and thirty-three cent level. And that's where you need to see price close above in order to wet your whistle here. Uh, so I hope that that helps you out. Um, you know. You, I know you were expecting, anticipating, you know, the uh, launch to be a uh, positive event. Um, it wasn't a positive event as far as shareholders were concerned out there. So I do hope that helps you out. Thanks much for taking the time to write in. Satish writes in and says, Steve, could you elaborate your statement yesterday on Tom's show regarding SPY? Mentioned 2007-2009 time frame. I can, Satish. What, what we'll do is I don't have, I don't think I do. Oh, I do. Okay. I didn't think I had that uh, worksheet open. I do have it open, and so I don't have to do this during the break. What I was referring to then, this is a weekly chart. This is for the S&P 500, and you'll just have to confirm for me that uh, this is what you were asking about. And I'm going to go back to the 2007-2009 time frame. I guess you could always pull up the uh, PowerPoint presentation, but we're just going to the, the uh, live chart, so to speak. So here, the 2007 top, give me a moment here, occurred right here. So this is the week of October the uh, 12th, back in 2007. And so that was the high. From that high, every counter trend rally, and when I'm, what I'm looking at here, these numbers represent consecutive closes above the prior close in black numbers, consecutive closes below the prior close to the downside. Those are the red numbers. We're focused right now really on the black numbers out here. And what you will see is there was never a counter trend move where we had three, more than three consecutive. Oh, you don't see the chart? Thank you, Mr. Bill. Really? Oh, you don't see the chart. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. I, I did see white charts. I just didn't see it was the wrong set of white charts. Here we go. There we go. Okay. So now we're back. Now we're back in the saddle again. My apology. We'll start from the beginning. The beginning back here where my crosshair is at, back in October of 2007. So now you can see, we know that that was the high. What you and I are looking for is patterns, right? This, this show is all about patterns. And uh, just to try to increase our odds and what the market is communicating to us. So here we can see that each counter trend move, each counter trend move lasted either two 
to three consecutive weeks, and then that was it. And price, uh, you know, went lower. Maybe it went sideways out there. Uh, so, if we fast forward to where we're at today, we can see that from the high, which was in uh, the S and P 500, was the early part of January out here. We have had two of those counter trend rallies. One that lasted two weeks. One that lasted three weeks. So. My thought process was, because of the bottoms that we have out there, weekly bottoms, daily bottoms, is that what we should see here is a two to three week counter trend move. Satish, am I answering the question that you were asking about out here? Uh, just, you know, thumbs up, yes or no, or what have you. Um, if not, then uh, I'll try to have to figure out what else it is I might have been uh, talking about. But this is what I should have been talking about, referring to the 2007-2009 time frame, and just simply the uh, typical type rally that we should see out here. And uh, so I hope that that helps answer your question out there. Now, the reason to also still believe that that is a real possibility and will remain a real possibility is where that spot volatility index is trading. And as we speak right now, so far we've seen a test and rejection of that 50-day exponential moving average. The spot volatility index, and that's at the 2799 level, we're trading right now at uh, 2785. As long as price can remain below that level, then the S&P 500 should move sideways to higher. Well, how do you know that, Steve-O, sideways to higher? Because we actually track that. So if we take a look at the spot volatility index, which is at the bottom of my chart here, draw the 50-day expense moving average on there, then we can see, generally speaking, when the price is above or below the 50-day expense moving average, what happens to the S&P 500? The green rectangles, squares, whatever you see out there, uh, those are periods of time when the spot volatility is below the 50-day. The yellow ones uh, when price is above the 50-day exponential moving average out there. So at this stage here, at 1.37 in the afternoon, Satish, what we have is just kind of a normal, natural pullback out here using the spot volatility index as one of our guides, and that suggests that we should move higher. If we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, the advanced decline oscillator, it's still above zero. It's moving a bit lower out here. That's actually kind of a potentially a bullish signal. What I mean by that is that uh, with that rally, if we had rallied hard yesterday, rallied hard today, we likely would get that New York Stock Exchange advanced decline oscillator up to the 150 level. And that would get us into the certainly the overbought condition. And we'd expect a, a pullback. Now we're getting a pullback out here. That pullback, do I have what screen am I on? I'm in the black one. If we take a look at volume, just to get a feel for what the index ETFs are showing us. That would be great if I could actually find here. Here's the index ETFs. So volume today so far in SPIs, 45 million shares to the downside. That's going against to the upside, 98 million shares. What we have here? It's a very light volume pullback. In the case of the uh, Qs out there, it was 58 million shares to the upside. Right now, we're at 39 million shares to the downside. Again, the Qs are where the problem is. Steve Rhodes with CFNN. Right Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Dow is down 287. S&P's up 54. NASDAQ 277. That's 1%, 1 percent, 1 and 4 tenths, and 2 and 3 tenths percent to the downside. Let's go to our next question. Again, it's the only question now that we've got in the queue out here. This one coming in from LB. LB says, hope you're doing well. I am. Thanks so much for hope you're doing well also. Can you look at GTE? We absolutely can. GTE is now named Grand Tierra Energy out there. GTA, give me the technical rundown. If you have time, can you also take a look at URA? So we'll do both here for Lee. We've got, let's go over to our white background uh, charts out there. Oops, I didn't mean to do that, that's for sure. Uh, let's go here, make sure, so we should be back. Okay, nope, I've got the black background chart, so that's not what I wanted to do. Change windows. And there we go. So now we've got our white background charts up on our screen. So on the daily time, on the monthly time frame, that's the left-hand panel, you've got a confirmed TD9 count top, says it might want to take price back to 94 cents. The weekly time frame, you've got a Rhodes momentum indicator top, wave number seven top, that's letter G, and price below its weekly profiles, it's suggesting a target of 66. By the way, price failed to hold 94 cents, 52 pennies is where this would be headed to. The daily time frame chart says time out, time out, time out, guys and gals. I've got a TD9 count bottom, and at a minimum, I want to have a counter trend move. That counter trend move should take you to the 139 to 145 level. That may be it, based upon what the monthly and weekly charts are telling us. But if price were to close above a buck 45, then you could easily make the case that price is going to move to the 178 level. So, Lee, monthly chart suggests lower price, 94. 54, 52, those would be the levels to be looking at. Weekly chart says I want lower price. Its price target is 66 pennies. The daily time frame says those targets don't come into play, not just yet, not until I have a bit of a counter trend move. And that's going to take us to 139, 145, and above 145, 178 would be the number. So, Lee, I hope that helps you out with regard to GTE. Let's go take a URA. Again, this will take about 9 to 10 seconds here to populate or thereabouts, and we'll go see what uranium, URA, is actually doing out here. So uh, come on, come on, get going. I said 10 seconds, so you're taking more than 10 seconds, or maybe 10 seconds seems like an eternity when you're doing a, a radio show. So now we've got uranium up here, or URA, um, and price on a monthly basis is uh, testing the bottom of its monthly profile. The bottom of its monthly profile is at 2010. Important. But not necessarily on June 28th, more important a couple of days from now. Price closes below that level, the signal would be 1072 would become the target. Price is also trading right now just below the bottom of its uh, weekly profile. We've already had two weeks where price closed below that. This could be week number three. That profile level is 1959 out there. So that would suggest 
because I don't see a bottom out here, that if price closes below 1959 at week's end, 1674 becomes a price target. But much like what we took a look at for GTE, the daily chart for uranium says, I want to bounce. Why? It has both a TD9 count, roads momentum indicator signal, price is trading with inside a bullish structured profile. Yesterday was day one above the center, which if we got a rally that uh, took us above 1960 at day's end, is then going to signal a move back to 2102. And above 2102, you'd be looking at 2208. The pullback, price may be targeting its oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 1923. If price were to close below 1923, that would be a really 1913, I would say. That would be a signal to you and I that price is going to go target that lower swing point. That's the one that formed bar number nine, and that's a swing point from June 23rd out there. So overall, the larger time frames, in summary, the monthly and the weekly, are suggesting lower price. Lower price being 1674, being 1072. The daily time frame says you might be thinking about lower price, but as of 146 in the afternoon, I'm thinking higher price after this little retracement is done. And that higher price should take you to 2102 to 2208 level. So LB, I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. And uh, we'll look forward to speaking to you again. No other request at this moment. So now let's come back and see. Uh, well, I know a question in everybody's mind. It's a question in my mind, at least. Maybe it's not everybody's mind. Maybe it's just Stevie's mind. And the question is, was that just the extent of the rally? We just had a couple of day uh, rally out there, which is a possibility. And the reason why it is a possibility, we're going to switch charts out here. We're going to go to the black background screens. And uh, why I've got to give that some real serious consideration here is because of, was that right? Give me a moment here, folks. I think this is going to pick up the right thing. It should. Yeah, okay, perfect. So this is the Dow Cash Index. This is the Dow Cash Index. I've taken this back to where... Looks like I've taken this back in the 1997 time frame out here. Now, what this shows, this shows us both the horizontal and the diagonal price channels that are in here. And it's really cool. Each of them are equidistant to each other. They're all the same distances out here. So once you establish one set, which is what I've done, and that first set really took place, um, it looks like to me, that took place between the price level 10, 558, and 79.36. At 10, 558, believe it or not, there have been 186 closes at about that price level. The next highest price level for closes is at 79.36. That difference gives us our equidistant measurements to create those horizontal trading range boundary lines. Now, I know that's a mouthful. And I said it a little bit slower than normal, just so that I didn't screw it up, but also so that you might be able to pay attention to it as well. Clearly, allowed me to articulate. Now, these levels, these horizontal and diagonal levels, can really act as support and resistance areas. Well, 31,530 was one of those levels. Now, there's only been eight, eight closes or opens, co-located opens or closes, at that price range. And the rally on Friday took us right up to that level, right up to that horizontal trading range, which also was a diagonal trading range boundary line. Now, the diagonal trading range boundary line, that's easily established. I just simply were taking the lows from 2009 against the lows of 2020. And then you can see you've got this nice little range out here from back in the 2015 time frame when we had a bit of a consolidation. And that set up for me the top of this price channel out there. Now, once I had those established, all I had to do was just simply tell my system to make the next level equal to that price difference, that price range out there. And those are the dashed lines out there. Turns out that that dashed line worked out pretty well as far as identifying uh, tops out here. And that's the level that price has run into. Now, if price can close above 31,530, then that signal would be telling us that price should get back to its recent highs. The reason I in the 33, 314 level, or maybe back to 34, 152. But if that doesn't happen, what this is telling you and I is that what price wants to do is make a run to 28,909. So there is that possibility out there, definitely a possibility, but we have the daily and the weekly bottoms. What do you mean, Stevie? We have the daily and weekly bottoms. So that's a great question. 
So let's, uh, we'll review, well, we don't, eh, we'll try to review that, unless there's a question that comes in, because we just, I just realized we're almost towards the end of the show. My, how time flies. We're about two to three minutes away from that time period. But we do have the dollar to summarize this, that ran into a significant resistance level. That's the horizontal trading range. That was at the 31 to 530. It also was at diagonal level of resistance. What's the natural area for price to pull back or top? Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. Right now, you got the, all the U.S. indices trading to the downside. Dow's off 294. S&P 55, NASDAQ 100, 277, Russell's down 23, semis off 45. And the chart that I had up on my screen, we're going to go switch to that, daily time frame chart for each of the equity future contracts. On it are both daily and weekly profile levels. So weekly are in yellow, the daily are in that uh, blue color out there. This is, we're right now at an area, as so we take a look at all four, that are at potential levels of support in order to be able to get a turnaround Tuesday going here. What do you mean, Stevie? So if we take a look at the ES Mini, that's the left-hand panel out here, we can see that price on Friday closed above the top of its profile. That's at 45.53. What price has done, it's moved all the way back down to the uh, today's low is 40. What did I say that the uh, top is 45.53? The low today, what the heck's going on there? That's weird. Uh, give me a moment. The low today Okay, let me start that over. That, that, that's why it was making sense. The top of the daily profile is 38.41. Today's low is 38.43. Oftentimes when you break through a level of resistance, price will pull back to test that level to just ensure that old resistance becomes new support. 
So that's the area to watch. Now, if price closes below 38.42 out there, that's going to suggest a lower move. But right now, price is sitting at a key level of support. In the case of the NQ, price has made its way back to the top of a profile level. And the top of that profile is 11.716. We've gotten down to 11.738. In the case of the Dow, the Dow has pulled back to the bottom of its weekly profile, which price has been trading above. So that's another potential level of support. And that is at the 30, 31, 31.030. I take that back. That is the bottom of the weekly profile, not the top. The bottom of the weekly profile, which is 31.038 out there. Again, a potential level of support. And if we take a look at the Russell 2000 to finish it off, it is also trading back to the bottom of its weekly profile. And that's at the 1739 level. Today's low so far, 1751. So we are at a time, we're at, we're at a space for each of these equity future contracts that are near levels of support. So watch those areas out there. If price starts trading below those levels that I gave you, that suggests that we continue to head level. Folks, stay tuned. Your favorite polar bears up next. That's David White. After that, Tom O'Brien, he'll take us on home. I'll be back with you on wonderful Wednesday. You have a terrific Tuesday.